Good morning. All right. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, I have just a few announcements for you. Um, one is that after worship today, we'll have healing prayer at the altar rail. So if you'd like to come up for individual prayer. Um, you're more than welcome to come up after worship um, today. I'll be up at the altar rail, um, and Kim will be greeting folks in the back. Um, so I wanted to let you know about that. Also, if you'd like to take a prayer shawl for someone um, who you know is going through a hard time, they are also over there as well. And then also today, so during the summer, our plan is to turn on a pot of coffee every Sunday after worship, but we kind of had a feeling given that it's the 4th of July week, maybe not everybody would necessarily want a cup of coffee today, given the busyness of the weekend. So our plan is not to turn on coffee, but if you would really like to have some conversation and a cup of coffee, um, Lisa is more than willing to turn it on for you. She's up in the balcony so you can see her and she can quickly brew a pot. Um, but otherwise, take a look in your bulletin for the other announcements that, that we have. But with that, let's take a moment to take a deep breath and center ourselves for worship this morning by listening to the prelude. Thank <laughs> you.
Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, who in this chapter 28 is giving a glimpse of hope. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all of the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But now listen to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet, the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm 89 spoken responsively. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I persuade it as a steadfast I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Happy are the people who know festival shout. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your presence. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor, our might is exalted. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospels. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me 
welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Before I get into the sermon, I just want to say, I don't know if there's another Lutheran church in New England that has an accordion during the gospel acclamation, and it just makes me very happy. So thank you, Ed. <laughs> I just, it makes me happy to look over and I never know which instrument Ed's going to be holding. And it's so great. So anyway, there's a little aside for you. Now we'll go into the sermon. <laughs> So it was six years ago uh, that the congregation where my husband was serving as pastor, he received a call that he needed to go to the bedside of one of the, his member's husbands, a husband. Uh, her husband had a cardiac event overnight and was placed onto life support. And after all the tests were run. Uh, they realized that there was nothing that they were going to be able to do to help him recover. And so the family made the hard decision to take him off of life support. However, the family wanted to gather together to share stories and to pray. And so people from all over the country flew in quickly and they were in the ICU room together. And it was a small room, but a lot of people inside that room. And so, because there were so many people in that room, one of the doctors pulled Brett out and said, listen, you have to stop this. You have to get them, you need to end this quickly because it's getting too hot in there and I'm afraid that someone is going to pass out. And Brett said, I can't stop this. They're sharing stories. They're doing what they need to in order to be able to say goodbye. We're gonna pray together. Listen, I'll try my best, but I'm not going to rush this for you. And so they were there and they were still sharing stories in this crammed ICU room when all of a sudden cups of water started to be passed through the room. One of the nurses walked down the hall and would fill a cup with ice and then with water. And two by two, she walked back down the hall and she would pass it into this ICU room. And I don't know how many times she needed to do that, but she kept on doing it, is passing a cup of cold water throughout that room. And because of that cold water from that nurse, the family was able to remain in that room, was able to share their stories. They were able to pray and to bless their loved one and commit him to God's care before they took him off of life support. And then it was six years ago that Brett, later that week, looked at what the gospel text was going to be after he had that moment in the hospital. And it was today's gospel reading. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. That day, God's presence and God's grace and God's love showed up in an ordinary thing like a cup of ice water passed through an ICU room. This message that we hear in our gospel reading, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, is part of the dialogue that we heard last week, where we heard, maybe not quite as an uplifting message, where we heard that not everyone is going to accept this message from Jesus, and there's going to be some division because of that. But Jesus makes it clear that when you are hospitable to a stranger who comes in his name, when you offer support or shelter or a cup of cold water, you are hospitable to Jesus and to the one who sent him. Russell Rathburn, who is an author and a minister at a church in St. Paul, in one of the commentaries I read this week, wrote, it tells us 
to treat the gospel, tells us to treat a stranger the way we would treat someone who is a guest in our home. Can I get you something to drink? It is a way of seeing the world, seeing all people. It is about seeing the other as one of your own. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? It sounds so simple in order to do that, as simple as a cup of ice water. But I think we also all know that that is harder than what it sounds like. Because also, a couple weeks ago, we heard what type of dinner parties Jesus was going to. And so, it, would it be easy for us to welcome the criminal, to welcome the tax collector, the one who stands for everything we against, everything that we stand for? Would it be easy for us to welcome that person into our home in the way that we would welcome in a family member. I mean, those are the dinner parties that we see Jesus attending throughout the gospel. Now, I don't know the faith of that nurse that day, and Brett never had a follow-up conversation with her after that moment. However, I do know that on that day, that was tragic for that family, as they crammed inside that room together to say goodbye to a husband and a father and a brother and a friend, and they committed him to God's care, that nurse was doing the work of God that day through that cup of cold water. And so may we be willing to go out of our way to fill up a cup of water and also May we be willing to put out our hand and accept that cup of water when we need it to. Amen. But the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolved to serve all in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for creation, for Connecticut River and all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors, and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, for any near death, and for all who grieve. We especially pray for Pastor Noel, Julia, Sue, Diane, Jeffrey, Jerry, Dan, Deborah, Susan, the Bell family, Elaine and Tom, Jeff, Paul, Monique, Mark, Isabel, John, Cook, Joe, Mike, Jamie, Kristen, Kathy, Art, Charlie, George, Ray, Martha, Georgia, Janice, Fred, Giovanni, Peter, Bob, Carol, the Toby family, Mary, Christine, Aaron, Barb, Ruth, Betty, Kimberly, Marsha, Lori, the Collins family, Paul, Mary, Holly, Michelle, Deborah, and the Morsey family. The family of Dennis McGuire, friends and members of Emmanuel, all our homebound gift members and caregivers, all members of, and friends of Emmanuel who are currently serving in the military. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, our companion synod, young adults in global mission, and our partner in Mac, St. Paul's Church in Willington. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the great physician, healer, comforter, and friend. Send your Holy Spirit today to bless these prayer shawls, those who created them and those who will receive them. May the prayers woven into them with love be as comforting as the warmth that they offer, the shoulders and laps they cover. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Receive our prayers and answer them, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another with a sign of that peace. as you are able. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Give us a share of our sins. Give us our sins. And we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into heaven, but deliver us from evil. For thine please be seated as our communion assistants come forward here at emmanuel all are welcome at this table of grace we will begin with the pulpit side moving from the front to the back and you can come forward and receive in a continuous style on the floor or you're welcome to come up to the altar rail and receive at the altar rail um, if you do come up to the altar rail, uh, just wait until everybody has received and you receive a blessing, and then you can go back to your seat by way of the side steps. Um, and then once this side has received, we'll move over to the lectern side, moving from the front to the back, doing the same thing. If you are in need of a gluten-free option, just ask for it, and we have red wine and white grape juice. And all are welcome at this table. Come, eat what is good. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. We thank you, God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Please share the hearts. Thank you to God. In the morning, when I No. 
Thank you. 